Now back to Monsignor Jim. Thanks, Colleen. Well, our next guest's memoir explores the life and tragic death of his son's struggles with mental health and PTSD, which led to substance abuse and depression. Please welcome Edward Byrne, who's the author of In Whom I Am Well Pleased. Thanks for being with us. Glad you're here today. Sure. So I, I had a chance to read the book, actually, and uh, it doesn't always happen, but I was drawn to it right away. And to tell you the truth, what drew me was the cover. Uh, the cover is a very moving cover of, like, everybody's son, right? This right. is the son, you know, that everybody would love to, to have, right? Tell us about him. Tell us about Matt. Um, really, the all-American boy. Yeah. Uh, St. Agnes Choir boy, Chaminade High, Bowdoin College. Uh, lifeguard, right? Lifeguard, Jones Beach lifeguard. Yeah. And uh, his senior year of college, watched the towers come down. And uh, at that point, he was bound and determined to become one of the replacements. Wow. Which, uh, you know, I think his mom and I had our doubts about that, but, you know, you, you really can't say much. It's if your uh, son wants to join the military, you may say, well, uh, but you have to respect the decision. Sure. And uh, he had some uh, immediate tragedies on the job. He was at the Deutsche Bank fire, um, and then two kids were killed in Chinatown, run over by a truck, died in his arms. And, uh, you know, I think what his problem, he was a, uh, they call him a hose guy, uh, a truckie, uh, really not <laughs> any problems with fire, but the job entails more dealing with death yeah. than with fire. And uh, I think that just began to haunt him, began self-medicating, and uh, I think that they were very good standing by him and sending him to rehabs. Um, I don't think he ever understood the urgency of recovering. Mm. That, Interesting. you know, you could get around to it when you felt like it. But um, my own presumption was that, no, you got to get it right, uh, right away and avoid relapses. And uh, that's since been confirmed that the odds of ever recovering fully decrease the number of times you go back to the uh, back to the well and have relapses. So it's a very um, I also say in there some. I don't believe that all addictions are created equal. Yeah. And uh, I haven't heard much about that, but I think in his case, a uh, very strong one. And, um, you know, he just kept digging the hole. So there's that worry of being a parent of, of, a, of a kid who's struggling. And there's that worry, I've seen that many times, even in my own priesthood. I mean, that, you know, that laying awake at night and the worry of, of, of a couple that say our kid is struggling and we want to help, but ultimately you can only do so much. Right. And then you, you go out on the limb here, Edward. I mean, I think this was particularly moving and beautiful about this book is you really hold back nothing. And I give you a lot of credit for that. Um, even the day that he died, I mean, you, you go into tremendous detail about the pain and, and, and really like the, the knife entering your heart in a way. Um, but behind all of the pain, there's a sense of faith that kind of is a current in here that you don't want your readers to miss, right? No. Um, I think that's what gets you through. Um, ultimately, yeah. I think I have a line there that, you know, in, in the worst of times, you revert to your, uh, you know, fundamental rituals. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you don't have it, I think you're really adrift. And um, so in my own case, it was kind of postponing grieving and all that, trying to, you know, gather everyone up and, as I put it, get off the ash pile yeah. and keep going. And, you know, with some success, we're 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's still together. Some, some struggle still more than others. Some sure. were uh, more direct victims, if you will, of what went on. Um, but that's what it is, and that's, that's what life is. I, I find... <laughs> Interesting, the last guest with the <laughs> don't give up. Yeah, the gave irony up. of it is like, yeah. oh, God, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, he's, he's one who gave up and he lost hope. Yeah. And you cannot lose hope. That is the fatal, um, that's the last straw. I always tell couples in the blink of an eye, there's a blindness for these 
these poor kids, you know? And I think that's part of this. Like, it's just this blink of an eye, that loss of hope, that's just the ultimate loss of hope, you know? It's that, and I think it's, um, what do I call it, terminal impatience. Oh, yeah. That they're not going to wait one second more uh, and put up with us another moment, yeah, yeah. and that, that'll do it. What's your advice, Ed, to other parents? I mean, uh, I personally know a number of people who are watching right now. They have had to live through the suicide of a child. It is a terrible thing. It is a horrible loss. And it's a pain that is is—it's sort of an indelible mark on the heart of a family, right? Um, it's so sad. It's incredibly sad. Do you have advice that you could give to anybody who has gone through that, who's maybe watching today around the country? Well, you know, my hope was that... Um for people struggling with the situation, that this will be a cautionary tale, uh -huh. as the publisher says, and, and give them a heads up, um, but also kind of a guide to survival mm -hmm. in, in the face of that, yeah. because it really isn't over. I mean, since that time, in the last 10 years, <clears throat> excuse me, we've, uh, we've had three more grandchildren, um, you know, his younger brother became married, father of three boys. Wow. You know, yeah. life goes on with you or without you, and you really need to um, dig deep and, and try to stay together with the love of your family yeah. and the love of God yeah. and uh, hopefully survive. You're honestly, and I mean this, a living example. I remember this funeral. I remember when this all happened. Rockville Center came out to support. Rockville Center was there for you, you guys. And I, I, that, was a, that was a sense of hope for me to see so many people loving you through disaster, you know. If people want to get this book, which is, is worth it, if, uh, if you can, first of all, get, get a box of tissues while you're reading this. But there's a lot of hope in this book. There's a lot of faith in this book. Um, and that's, I think, what we all need, uh, particularly in these kind of situations. Where can people go? Well, it's uh, published by Enroute. Books and Media, which is a Dominican-affiliated outfit out in St. Louis. But you can get it on uh, Amazon, Good. Barnes & Noble, so all the, you know, standard places book, to go. book yeah. purveyors. And um, it is a tough book to read. It was a tough book to write. But hopefully it's worth the effort. It's a tough book on, to put down. Huh. And that's another thing you need to know. Seriously, it's a tough book to I've put down. I've heard that. So that's the truth of the matter for me. Um, I'm sitting at my desk, you know, reading the whole darn thing in an afternoon because of that. So that's part of the riveting story and, and the life of faith. So thank you for sharing this uh, and for being here today. I know this isn't easy, but I appreciate you coming and being a part of this because, uh, you know, you never know who you're speaking to today and changing a life by that, you know. You know, hopefully God bless them all. Yeah, exactly right, right? That's the great gift. We keep you in our prayers, and we pray for all of you out there, too. Thanks again for being with us. I appreciate Thanks it very much. Me. More CFN right after this.